Hey everybody, my name is Bobby. Welcome to Mile High Church. Thank you so much for spending a part of your weekend with us, especially if you're new. Our vision, oneness revealed, a world of love, peace, and abundance for all. Our mission, to serve as a spiritual beacon for personal empowerment and global enlightenment. Before we get started today, we wanna to give you a look at a few things coming up around Mile High Church for you and your family. On Friday, November 3rd, Dan Harris will present 10% Happier here in the sanctuary and on live stream. Let's find out how mindfulness, meditation, and other techniques can help with things like anxiety, stress, depression, burnout, FOMO, you name it. And did you know we have a podcast? Yes, we do. Mile High Church has a podcast, so check it out on your favorite podcasting platform for Sunday talks and bonus material. Oh, what is this? It's like a little video. Flick. I'd like to teach you how to make a labyrinth. First, you're going to want to start with a plus. Then make these cute little right angles hovering in the corners, like baby birds begging for worms. After that, place small marks opposite each angle. And to complete the labyrinth, simply make large arcs, or maybe arches, from one point to the next. Imagine making a rainbow. I think the labyrinth is a great symbol for Mile High Church because it exemplifies spirituality across cultures and traditions throughout space and time. Its use as a symbol of journey, transformation, and connection to the divine has allowed it to transcend cultural and religious boundaries, making it a powerful tool for inner exploration and meditation. It's truly astounding how widespread the labyrinth is. You could even say it's written in our DNA. But if you do say that, that it's written in our DNA, you're gonna to wanna to get ready for some tough follow-up questions. For more information about anything you've heard today, stop by the Events Center or check us out online at milehighchurch.org. Good morning, Mile High. My name is Stacy. I'm so glad to see you. Um, I am so thrilled to introduce to you our brand new Mile High Youth Choir. Uh, the Mile High Youth Choir has been on hiatus since COVID, and so this is a group of mostly new kids, and uh, we're really excited to sing for you today. This group is open to everyone in grades 1 through 12, so if you've got a kiddo that you think might enjoy it, please come join us between the services on Sundays. Anyways, and here we go.
wonderful. Thank you, kids. So good to have you and your director, Stacey Landis, here today. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful. What a great song. Uh, I don't know if he's here today, but Tony's in my class on Tuesday nights. He says that he calls this place Smile High because it makes him smile. So thank you for that, Tony. And those kids just sang about that. So welcome to Smile High Church today. So glad that you are here with us. And what a joy it is to be together in this beautiful community that welcomes all people. And as we begin our service today, I wholeheartedly invite each one of us to be in receivership of some good on our part. Whether you're right here in our sanctuary or watching us online, just take a moment and just breathe in a willingness to receive something spectacular today. Something that contributes to your growth, your well-being, some aha, some new idea. That's why we're called the new thought movement that allows you to feel better or more connected in your life. Whether it's your first time here and you maybe never come back or you come back many times or you've been here many times, there's always that opportunity to open our minds and hearts to be in receivership. And so it may be a song, it may be a part of the message, a prayer, it may be something that happens in the community center later as you're talking to something, someone, but there's something here for each one of us, and so let's claim it now for our greater living. And as we do that, let's also allow ourselves to breathe in and anchor ourselves in the vision and mission for Mile High Church. You heard Bobby read it in the announcements, if you were here for the announcements, and even if you weren't, I'd love for us to read them aloud together, so please join me as we say our vision and mission. First, our vision, oneness revealed, a world of love, peace, and abundance for all. And our mission, to serve as a spiritual beacon for personal empowerment and global enlightenment. Ah, I'm feeling that. What a joy it is now to step into some spiritual practice together. We're going to sing a special song, and I invite you, if you normally close your eyes during this song, Surely the Presence, to consider keeping them open as our children are going to join Kali R and do ASL. They're going to do American Sign Language to Surely the Presence this morning. And then we're going to have some silence, and then Reverend Jackie will lead us in prayer. Let's begin. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. I can hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of God.
Yes, we acknowledge and know that surely God is in this place. Seeing those beloved faces of those sweet young people as they sign the beauty of that song that reminds us there are angels all around us. Angels in the guise of friends, of community members, of loved ones, and we feel those angel wings. We don't just sense them, we feel them. We feel the love, the kindness, the joy that there is in this life in spite of what appearances may show us. This community of love and light and peace and joy that we get to come to every week and bask in the glory that is God in each person. Because we know that God is all there is no matter what appearances are. And in this world right now, it causes us to pause and ask the questions, why? Because so much pain is inflicted on innocent people in Israel and Palestine, in the Ukraine, in places we are not even aware of, and God is right there. And for each person, we say, feel God, feel the love that we all share with you, the peace, the light. Know that God is all there is. And for those of us here in the room and those who are watching online, this service today fills us with peace and joy and hope as we ground ourselves into Mother Earth. We anchor ourselves there knowing that as we are anchored, we can be a positive effect for change in this world right now. Thank you for the service. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the message about the tree of life. Thank you, God. I can let this prayer go now because I know it is unfolding perfectly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Spirit. And together we affirm, and so it is. the joy of God within me. I shine with the light of God within me.
Our interfaith spiritual practice this week comes from the faith tradition of Judaism. As we practice today, we send out peace and love, holding those innocent lives impacted in Israel and Palestine in our hearts. The Sabbath, or Shabbat, the Jewish ancient practice of rest, gives us a rich template for connecting within ourselves and setting aside space with discipline and love in order to get in touch with the infinite nature of God. Kadosh, the Hebrew word for holy, comes from a root that means apart, separate, or withdrawn. In Judaism, honoring the Sabbath is to devote time to set apart, for set aside that which is holy. Sabbath rituals create a boundary from daily life in which we can non-negotiably grow our spiritual selves, grow ourselves and our communities in connection, and the depth that comes from spiritually practicing together. This week, you are invited to consider honoring Shabbat. Maybe you want to light candles at sunset on Friday, or possibly to refrain from work, the computer, driving, or some other actions on Saturday. You can also offer prayers of gratitude and intention at sundown on Saturday to re-enter the normal life rhythm. Jewish prayers of reverence and devotion are often chanted or sung. So we are grateful to have Joel Dash with us this morning, a congregant, a choir member, a staff member. He is going to guide us in the singing of the Shema prayer. This Shema prayer is central, a central affirmation of Judaism, and it affirms the belief that there is only one God, and also it affirms God's oneness of being. It's traditionally recited twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Joel is going to sing it for us twice through, and then we can all join together and sing it once more. Shema Yisroel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisroel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ehad. Let's join together now. Shema Yisroel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ehad. Peace and blessings for your week. You are the light in a darkened room and rain on a desert floor. Love beating in the hardest heart, calm to a raging storm. You're the miracle of miracles, moving through everything, and you move in me. Move in me. For a hungry soul, life of the truth laid bare. The moon that glows with the light of the sun, but even that can't compare. You're the wonder of wonders, shining through everything. 
everything and you shine in me. Like the stream that spills from the edges of an overflowing cup, you're the blessing of blessings flowing through everything, and you flow through me, flow through me. Thank you so much, Denise Rosier. Wonderful job. So good to have you here today. And our wonderful band, Kent Routen, Strauss, Rob Lowe, Mike Marlier, and Bijou Barbosa. Thank you so much. Great to have you here. I also want to acknowledge I have some special colleagues and friends here today that I want to acknowledge. I didn't tell production about this, but I think over here, I believe we have Reverend Marilyn Leo here. So glad to have you here. Reverend Kathy Mastriani is here also. And Ms. Darrell's student, Julia Matisse, is here too. So thank you, all of you. So glad to see you here. Wonderful. They're serving our Science of Mind archives very well. We've got a really wonderful archives up in uh, Genesee right now, so lots of good stuff up there. And I am so happy to uh, be able to speak here during our annual Adventure in Faith, Adventures in Faith series. It's a five-week series. Today's week three, and I've always loved this series. It's a great time of year to come back together and have an adventure in faith, a deeper walk in faith. And I love how the team that has created this has also called it an Adventures in, Adventure in Faiths this year, which is part of why we're getting to have uh, an interfaith experience in the service each week deepening, profound, powerful. I'm so grateful for that. And to, the series is, is beautiful and called Spirituality from the Ground Up. I think they probably had the slide there. And Reverend Josh's talks have been amazing. It's just been a, a great couple of weeks. Today, I get to talk about your tree of life. And I would definitely encourage anyone who'd like to go deeper with this material to download the materials from our website. We do have small groups going on who are using the materials, but they're available to anyone. And they're chock full of inspiration, quotes, beautiful images. Indeed, this week has a whole bunch of definitions of the tree of life from different spiritual perspectives and different ways of seeing the tree of life. And I read all of them and love them all. So it's a great journey for us individually as well as if you're in one of the groups. So please consider doing that. You'll find it easily on our website. When I think of the tree of life, not only did I enjoy all that I read, I kept 
anchoring into an image for myself from when I was a child. Uh, I believe, looking back at our genealogy, I'm about a fifth generation Coloradan. I'm very proud of that. And yeah, yeah, all of us Coloradans are pretty proud. And my mother's side of the family had, my grandparents had a cabin up in Garfield, Colorado. It uh, was right at the base of the Monarch Pass. You could see Monarch Pass right above us. And we went there when, when I was young quite frequently. Uh, I lived in Salida, Colorado for the first six years of my life. And almost every weekend in the summer, we went there. In the wintertime, we couldn't get in. The snow was so deep. But uh, we would go there frequently. And even when I moved away, came to Denver with my family, we would go back there often for weekends. And it was beautiful country. The river ran in front of our cabin. And nature was so beautiful. And I would sneak off frequently away from the family and ventured down the road a piece to where there was this big grove of, of aspen trees. And I would just go and lie down on the grass, on the ground. It was very tall grass and just stare up the aspens for hours. One of my favorite things to do would be to listen for the wind coming, and then watch as I could hear it coming from far away, and suddenly it would whisk through the trees over me, and the leaves would blow, and I could feel the cool ground against my back, no matter how hot it got up there in that, in that area un underneath the trees, the ground was just nice and cool, and it represented an escape for me, it represented feeling in tune with nature and my own natural energy, and it just represented beauty for me. It began my lifelong love of trees also, so I'm very happy to be talking about your tree of life. I do admit I'm a child of the 60s, so I'm a hippie tree-hugging girl. I got a picture here to prove it. There's me. <laughs> Almost any tree, if I can hug it, I'm going to hug that tree. And uh, so I love uh, hugging trees. And um, I also admit to being, a friend of mine calls me a woo-woo wackadoo. I talk to trees. Anyone else talk to trees? Yeah, okay, a lot of us talk to trees. The trees talk back. The trees talk back. I hear what the trees say. Uh, I, I like that. In fact, the trees told me a riddle once. They said, uh, uh, what did the trees wear to the swimming pool? Swimming trunks. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was a groaner, wasn't it? But it made me giggle. It's a good one. So I think that uh, trees are very powerful, and indeed, this whole series, Spirituality from the Ground Up, the opportunity to talk all that we're talking about even today with the Tree of Life, it reminds me of the first thing that I just want to touch into, and that is that it serves us to return to nature, to remind ourselves I hear the voice of my parents and my grandparents growing up. Just go outside and play, will you? Just go outside. An encouragement to just go outside. Get outside. And I would go outside and go play jailbreak with my friends. And I was a really good hider. And I would just hide for hours, just hiding in nature. And loved being outside. And I think what returning to nature does for us is that the nature we're returning to is mother nature, the energy of the earth, the beauty of the trees and the flowers and the grass and the bushes and all of that. It returns us to a rhythm, a natural rhythm of beingness that it behooves every human being to experience. To be in nature is to return ourselves to our nature. And the reason this is becoming even more important, I think, is that today's world, as much as I love technology and all that it can do for us, it is, 
It is uprooting our sense of nature. It's keeping us disconnected from the natural rhythms of nature that are moving through everything and moving through us. It allows us to be stuck in something else, to be on our computers for too long, buried in our phones, and not noticing the trees and the flowers and smelling the roses and allowing ourselves to feel an attunement into our very nature. It's important for us to do that because things are shifting in, in nature and, and pockets of nature get challenged so often. I love uh, American writer Bill Vaughn says, suburbia is where the developer bulldozes out the trees then names the streets after them, right? <laughs> And so it behooves us to pay close attention. I, I know that this summer I've been away a little bit. I've been guest speaking at some of our centers, mostly in Colorado, and just driving to them and being in those centers and being in the places they are and going to the Colorado Monument, living in Colorado most of my life. I'd never been to the Colorado Monument. Beautiful. Uh, we went to my hometown of Salida and uh, got an Airbnb where we, uh, we get up every morning at 5 a.m. to do our practice practice and do our reading and we watch the sunrise outside the window of our master bedroom on the collegiate peaks every morning and just enjoyed and an antelope would come into the yard every morning we named him Gary and Gary would show up and do his thing and then wander off and we would sit on that front porch just staring at the mountains and looking at the beauty of nature so I feel like this summer has given me a re-anchoring. I'm not, I'm not a big uh, camper, I will admit. that I've done it. I've done it. I can do it. It's not my favorite thing to sleep in nature. I'm kind of like Fran Le Lebowitz says, uh, I'm not the type who wants to go back to the land. I'm the type who wants to go back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel the power and the energy of it, and I feel a centeredness in my being after this summer. I haven't felt for a long time returning to nature, finding ways to do that, my first point for the day. And with that, then, we get to discover and enter into the tree of life. Josh quoted last week from a book that Ernest Holmes wrote called This Thing Called You, my favorite Ernest Holmes book. Anybody else in the room? Yeah, yeah, a number of us. That's our favorite book. And Ernest says, guard well this garden of your mind. It is God's garden of your soul. Go often into your garden, sitting under the tree of life in cool, quiet communion. You will find fresh inspiration. So this reading to me is about return to nature and sit under the tree of life. Be aware of the tree of life. There's a lot of tree of life symbols in the store today and the store manager put this one on me, thank goodness. The tree of life that anchors us and allows us to use the awareness of nature itself, but also the metaphor of the tree of life as we venture on our journey of living. And so the first point that I have about the tree of life reminds me and us that the deeper the roots, the higher the branches. The deeper the roots, the higher the branches. One of the challenges that humanity has always faced and will always face is the propensity to only deepen the roots of our being so far into our essential nature. Surface rootedness, in other words. And when we're rooted at the surface, we're very overly concerned with things of the world of form. We're concerned with how it looks. We're concerned with what we can get. We're concerned with what we can see and what we can show and what we can point to and what we think we can only know at the surface level. And we will never feel true satisfaction and rootedness with that kind of root system. 
just like a tree itself that only roots at the surface level, seeking to get its nourishment from the topsoil, it's easily toppled over, isn't it? A strong wind comes and knocks it right over or, uh, t or, or causes it at least to lean. It can be traumatic for the tree if it doesn't root deeply. And you and I are the same. See, the truth is, no matter how spiritual we get, no matter how godly we become, there will always be winds of change blowing through our lives. There will always be winds that come along. And if we're only rooted at the surface level, then it's harder to recover. It's easier to fall over. It's easier for everything to be destroyed in our life because we've only rooted at the surface level. Instead, what this topic invites us to do is to consider being like a tree and rooting deeply, imagining and doing that which allows us to deep, more deeply root ourselves in the rich soil of creation, the universal soil of creation, so that we are strong. The first level that I think we go to when we begin to root more deeply is the level of humanity and the level of living and life itself. What happens when we're rooted at the surface is that sometimes we can be challenged to even enjoy our life. Life just seems like an ongoing challenge after challenge after challenge and issue after issue. But when we're rooted in that deeper level of being a human being, what begins to shift almost immediately is we find a joy in livingness. We find a part of us that says, I accept that I'm alive. And that may sound very basic, but I think for many of us, we can sense our divine nature and this hum human experience can be so challenged, sometimes parts of us just want to go, okay, I'm so done being a human today. I don't want to do this human thing anymore. But what we can find in this human experience is the part of us that essentially at some level or another agreed to be here. I've heard spiritual teachers say, if you want to know if your work here on earth or in this life is over yet, if you're still here, it's not. <laughs> and so we can root into that sense of being human and being here, and it makes us stronger in life. And when we're stronger in life, we can face immediately the winds of change and the winds of challenge. It may, be, it may be hard. Those winds may blow leaves off or branches may get damaged, but we're rooted and we can withstand it. I love in some of the esoteric practices, some of the, the practices of, of martial arts, the notion of rooting oneself into the earth. We used to have a gentleman come here who taught Aikido, and he would show us something that I've demonstrated in classes with students. I've done this with the teens here. Have someone come up and just say, okay, just stand here and be here and kind of push them, and they, they're easily toppled. They're easily off-balanced. And then I will say to them, root yourself. Imagine the earth and your energy grounded into the earth. And then touch them and push them, and they can't be pushed over. Practices in yoga, the tree pose, the ability to stand and root oneself to the earth with one foot and do the tree pose and be balancing oneself with your feet. When I was an ice skater, we used to skate. I used to skate on one foot, often for hours, just using my other foot to move myself along, using the toe pick or using the blade, but being on just one foot for hours at a time and just being in that space while moving on that little thin blade and just 
feeling that centeredness of one-leggedness. Because I had to root myself below the surface into the earth. Something in me knew this, and something in us knows this. We have to do that deep rootedness of being here on this earth, in this life, fully alive, living full out. And then the deeper level of that is our rootedness in the divine. Rooted in God, in source itself, in that creative soil. When I imagine those roots going deep into spirit, I live a more stable life. And that stability is all about the energy that moves forward and up and in me as I face anything that shows up in my life, be it the thing that is good or bad or indifferent from the human standpoint. There is this willingness to then move forward from that rootedness as the tree of life. And if we don't do that, when we're living at the surface, we're tempted to go to war, aren't we, with facts and opinions and realities and things that come into our lives, which is not a powerful stand. I'm suggesting even to us today that part of what we're facing collectively, part of why there are wars in Israel and Palestine, part of why there's this war in Ukraine, part of why racism continues to be a challenge, part of why there's road rage and angry people is that humans are not rooting themselves in the deeper truth, when we root ourselves in humanity and human life and in God, there's this anchoredness that happens. This is part of why we chose spiritual practice as our initiative this year for 2023 to invite us all to root more deeply into the truth, the wise part of us that can meet challenges. I'm happy to say that I married a man who also is a tree hugger and talks to trees. And so recently, he was telling me he was doing some repair work in our front yard with the sprinkler system. And he noticed we have two big trees there. And he noticed that one of the trees rooted itself through the pipe in the sprinkler system to get some water. Here's how Ken handled that. And I, it, I give him credit because he could have handled it a number of ways, couldn't he? He could have gone to war with the tree. And he could have cut out its roots and he could have cut, d dug and cut, it, cut its roots and cut its branches or even cut the tree down so that it wouldn't hurt our sprinkler system. But instead, my sweet husband sat on our front de deck and he had a conversation with the trees. <laughs> First of all, he got their names. One of them is named Groot, which makes a lot of sense. And the other one is Treebeard. And he asked them, he welcomed them to our yard, and he welcomed them to the water, and he asked one of them if it would please send its roots away from the house. And the other one, he said, I, I, you can have all the water, but you cannot come through the pipes of our sprinkler system. But we will make sure you always have enough water, and I am going to have to remove that root so I can replace our pipe, and I will trim your branches, and I am here to care for you. And that touched me so deeply as a metaphor for when we are rooted deeply and we are challenged how we can show up. And it's so important for us to do that right now for ourselves and for our fellow human beings. I love also the notion that we hear a lot about aspen trees. Have you heard about this new idea that's just been recently discovered about the connections of beautiful aspen trees? We have some pictures of one here, a picture. I found a Forest Service blog that reminded us one aspen tree 
is actually only a small part of a larger organism. A stand or group of aspen trees is considered a singular organism with the main life force underground in the extensive root system. In a single stand, each tree is a genetic replica of the other, hence the name a clone of aspens is used to describe a stand of trees. To me, that's a, just the notion of a stand of trees is a new definition of what it means to take a stand. What does it mean to take a stand as a human being on this planet? To me, I think it means I root deeply. Because I recognize that like the aspen tree, we all share one source. We are all rooted by the same presence, like a clone of aspen trees. We share the same genetic makeup of each other. We are connected. And so whenever one of us deeply roots ourselves in the rich soil of creation and takes a stand for peace, chooses not to go to war with ourselves or with another person, which might mean negative thoughts and frustrated thoughts, chooses to do that work to smooth out that energy, we then contribute to the entire grove of humanity in a profound way. The deeper the roots, the higher the branches. It then means that not only do we deeply root, but when we deeply root, we allow that energy to come forth into the branches of our life. And our tree of life is uniquely ours. I notice as I drive past a whole bunch of trees and I look at them, every one of them is lovely and interesting. Even like a, I know it's early, but a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Remember when Charlie Brown decorated that kind of sparse tree and made it so beautiful? None of us look at trees and shame them for how they look, right? None of us look at our trees in our yard and shame them for if they're missing a branch or maybe they got a little gray. I got a little gray thing right here. I'm just letting it grow. I figure I've earned it. Um, <laughs> that we allow tr our trees to be expressed just as they are. What if we allowed ourselves and others? We saw each other as beautiful trees in the grove of humanity. What if someone's tree is different than ours? The branch is different, or it's shaped a little different, or it, it behaves a little differently. We welcome it. We love it because it's part of nature. It's part of life and the seasons. The seasons of life will come and go for trees and for humans. And sometimes those seasons will remove all your leaves. They will blow away. But when we are deeply rooted, we know that they'll grow back. We know and we trust the season of living for ourselves and for our trees. And then as we allow our branches to grow high into the sky, into the light, into the, the truth of who we are, we become the tree of life. Someone who's become the tree of life, in my mind, is someone in whose presence we recognize the rootedness and the beauty. The beauty of their unique self. The beauty of them being who they are. The beauty of them speaking their truth and living their life. The beauty of them rooted in God, in their source, and yet fully expressed as themselves. And when more humans are like that, we can sit before them, and it's like we're in that grove of trees, just like me, amongst the aspen trees when I was a child. We can be that for each other. We can be that stand of trees for one another if we are willing to do this work of rootedness. I'd like to close with a poem today called Breathe by Becky Hemsley that is about life and about trees. She sat at the back and, she, and they said she was shy. She led with the front and they hated her pride. They asked her advice and then questioned her guidance. They branded her loud, then were shocked by her silence. When she shared no ambition, they said it was sad. So she told them her dreams, and they said she was mad. They told her they'd listen, 
then covered their ears and gave her a hug while they laughed at her fears. And she listened to all of it, thinking she should be the girl they told her to be best as she could. But one day she asked what was best for herself instead of trying to please everyone else. So she walked to the forest and stood with the trees. She heard the wind whisper and dance with the leaves. She spoke to the willow, the elm, and the pine. And she told them what she'd been told time after time. She told them she felt she was never enough. She was either too little or far, far too much, too loud or too quiet, too fierce or too weak, too wise or too foolish, too bold or too meek. Then she found a small clearing surrounded by firs, and she stopped, and she heard what the trees said to her. And she sat there for hours, not wanting to leave, for the forest said nothing. It just let her breathe. We are the tree of life for ourselves and unto each other. Let us breathe now. And I invite our practitioner prayer partners and ministers to stand with me. Together we are a stand of trees rooted deeply in that infinite light and love, accepting, affirming, proclaiming God as our source. The deep roots of life firmly planted in this awareness and experience of the infinite, always, always available to source, to nourish, to guide to lead. And so we root ourselves powerfully and joyfully right here, right now, as we come together in this prayerful energy, accepting and affirming these truths and seeing each being right here, right now, as an expression of the beautiful tree of life that they are, affirming that each being within the sound of our voice is an expression of this tree rooted deeply. And today, inspired to move forth in life more deeply rooted than ever before, joyfully accepting this truth, living this truth, and knowing that with this deep rootedness comes this expression of beauty through the branches of living, the various areas of life that we choose to express ourselves, beautiful, powerful, magnificent. I accept and affirm this for each one of us. I celebrate the way in which we are the tree of life for each other and for our community and for our fellow human beings. I celebrate and give thanks for this true connection that is the source of our living. And joyfully, I release this word now, letting it be, letting it go. It is done. And so it is. Amen. I am a precious, sacred gift you have opened up. Like the stream that spills from the edges of an overflowing cup. You're the blessing, a blessing flowing through everything and you flow through me. Flow through me. Thank you, Denise. So true. Thank you. Thank you. Watching online today, I'm very happy to say we have almost 400 people. They're from Spain, Japan, Oregon, New Mexico, Indiana, Nebraska, Arizona, Connecticut, and Tennessee. Welcome, all you online viewers. We're so happy to have you with us today. We're so grateful. Yes, we can applaud for them. Thank you. Thank you. And I invite us now as we step into a time of circulation to hearken back to what I asked us to consider in the beginning, to pay attention to has that awakening, that aha moment, that idea that you were looking for or was in receivership of anchored itself. Maybe it hasn't. It may still be coming later on as you have coffee in our community center or hang out on the plaza with folks or meander the lobby. But if it has, just be present to it and give thanks. Give thanks for this moment of receivership. And it is 
out of that and from that that we then give back. That when we have a chance to circulate today, we give back. If this isn't your day to give financially, that's fine. Give a prayer to someone near you or send prayers to every person here in this room or watching online. Send prayers to the church as this offering occurs. Let us all circulate our good in ways that work for us and support us. And for those who are giving financially today, we are so grateful. All the ways that you can give have shown themselves on the screen, and we thank you for participating in that. And now let's do that circulation by saying together our offering affirmation. Please say with me, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I circulate, and so it is. Tiny drops of water bouncing on my roof, drumming out a song of love, pounding out the truth. You send them to remind me, one for every blessing on me. Oh, they keep coming. Oh. Thank you to our young people and Stacy. Woohoo! Uh, how fun to have all this great music every Sunday, and especially adding the young people today. If you are new to Mile High, and uh, this is for those in the room, those who are online, you can go to our website and check out everything that's going on at Mile High, and much of it you can get involved in, even online. But if you're here in the room for the first time, we have a welcome center in the center of our lobby. We invite you to come out, get some information from us about Mile High. I'll be out there. Uh, if you're bashful, we have resource racks on each end of the lobby. You can grab all the information you need about Mile High. And now our practitioner prayer partners are coming down front and they're here for to support you with an affirmative prayer 
for more good, if that's what you want, or if there's something up for you, please take advantage of them. You can also go online 24-7, and you can also write a prayer request out in the lobby. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Jackie. And we want to just remind you that we do still have some tickets for our Dan Harris event coming up on November 3rd, 10% Happier. There, We've sold uh, over 1,000 tickets, so it's a big, renowned speaker event. He's very popular, and we are selling virtual tickets, too, if you want to watch online. We have a limited, unlimited number of those, so we'd love to have you be with us. He is out in the lobby today. Well, a, a picture of him is out in the lobby today. You can go meditate with him just like I did the other day. It's right near where I'm greeting, so you can just go around the corner and do that, and you can purchase your ticket at the event center if you'd like. We also want to remind you that we have Wednesday Night Insight. Every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, you can watch on Facebook. It's a brief message from one of our ministers accompanied by a prayer from a practitioner, and I think it might be Ken and me this week on Wednesday night, so uh, you'll get to uh, tune in and, uh, and enjoy that. It's a great way just to get a midweek uplift from any of our ministers. So 7 p.m. All right, Doug's already standing. Good job. All right, let's stand together for our benediction and peace song. As we go forth in love and light, we just celebrate the joyous energy and the truth of who we are, grounded in the spirit, grounded in the light, grounded in the love. What a joy it is to claim this, accept this, and affirm this. We are it now. Thank you, life. And so it is.